What happened this week? From Prime Minister Abiy's cabinet shuffle to the surge of coronavirus cases in the country. From the celebration of Buhay to the international recognition of two Ethiopian ministers, Recap Ethiopia will give you a look into the past week's happenings in Ethiopia. I'm Wangil Tamene, and this is Recap Ethiopia. On Thursday, August 18, 2020, news broke that Prime Minister Abiy Yahmed had appointed 10 government officials to different posts. Household names like Adana Chabebe and Takala Uma were reassigned to different positions. New faces like Dr. Gedeon Timotheos were introduced to ministerial posts as well. While each appointment brings with it its own unique political implications, Recap Ethiopia has dedicated this segment to three major figures in the reshuffling of Abiy's cabinet. We will talk about the former Attorney General and newest Deputy Mayor of Addis Ababa, Adana Chabibe, and the two officials that preceded and replaced her, former Deputy Mayor Takala Uma and the new Attorney General of the nation, Dr. Gedeon Timotheus. One of the pictures which got the attention of the past week was one of former Deputy Mayor Takala Uma presenting the key of the city to the new Deputy Mayor, Adana Chabibe, as the latter was sworn in as the newest head of the Addis Ababa City Administration in front of the Parliament. Adanich, who had been serving as the Attorney General until the recent appointment, is the first female to lead the city. So before anything, it is important to appreciate the relevance of the above appointment to gender issues in Ethiopia's strongly patriarchal society. Adana Chabiri, who was appointed as Attorney General in March 2020, spent a brief period at the organization. But she had a lot to do during that time. From adjusting to the administration of justice amid the coronavirus pandemic to the challenging period the country is currently passing through, Adanich's time as the Attorney General of the country had been eventful. Now she takes on another challenging task, the administration of the controversial capital of the country. She's not new to being a mayor of a major Ethiopian city either. Even though the administration of Addis Ababa is truly distinct from any other city in Ethiopia, for many reasons, Adanich brings with her an experience of mayorship. Previously, Adanich had served as the mayor of Adama or Nazareth. Even though records of her period as the city's administration are scarce, Many say her tenure can be described as exemplary. She then assumed the role of Minister of Revenue under the administration of Dr. Abiy Ahmed in September 2018. She worked at the challenging ministry until being appointed as the Attorney General earlier this year. Adanich is ascending in Ethiopian politics, leaving her mark in different institutions in a brief period of time. Not much is known about the new mayor, but she's one to keep an eye on. Her predecessor, Indra Takala Uma, is also one whose rise in the political ladder was meteoric. The 38-year-old engineer became the 31st mayor of Addis Ababa in July 2018, just months after Dr. Abiy Ahmed assumed office. The Addis Ababa University graduate at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels had served the same institution as a board member. Prior to his appointment as the deputy mayor of Addis Ababa, Takala had worked in different government positions. For instance, he served in similar city administration roles in Sabeta and Sulutta cities, as well as heading the Oromia Transport Authority and serving general manager of Oromia urban land sector on different occasions. Takela served as the head of the Addis Ababa city administration for a little over two years, at which time he introduced several initiatives that gained him prominence as well as criticism. His initiative that closed and fed public school students and the creation of the Shagar Dapo, the government-owned bread factory that is expected to meet the demand of bread in the capital as well as lowering the cost of bread significantly. However, his tenure was also marred with criticism over his alleged role in handing out condominiums to the employees of the Oromia administration and the changing demography of the country. The claim that he handed out thousands of identification cards to inhabitants of the Oromia region, which could affect the outcome of elections, policies of the government, and much more according to his vocal critics. Takala was appointed as the new Minister of Mines, Petroleum, and Natural Gas of Ethiopia by Prime Minister Abiy Yahmed on Tuesday, succeeding former Minister Samuel Urkato. That leaves us with the vacant position of Attorney General, which was assumed by former Deputy Attorney General Dr. Gedeon, who's also a young face in Ethiopian politics. The academician has played a crucial role in the institution since joining earlier this year. He is going to work with two Deputy Attorney Mayor, which were announced to be Tesfaye Daba and Fikadu Sag. 
Gideon's profile on the website of the renowned Central European University tells us that his primary expertise during his academic tenure was comparative constitutional law, constitutionalism, rule of law, democracy, as well as freedom of expression and religion. The former instructor had taught different courses in Addis Ababa University, Central European University, the Civil Service College, and Hawassa University. He completed his bachelor's in laws from Addis Ababa University, as well as completing his master's in laws or LLM and his doctor of judicial science, commonly known as the SDJ degree from the Central European University. Other appointments announced by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed on Tuesday are as follows. Dr. Kana Yadeta replaced the recently ousted Lamma Megersa to become Minister of Defense. Dr. Samuel Hurkato replaced Professor Hirut Waldemariam to become the Minister of Science and Higher Education. Johannes Boyaleo replaced Halelia Lule to become the leader of Institute of Strategic Affairs. Nugusut Lahun replaced Ephraim Lamango to become the new commissioner of the National Job Creation Commission. And Dauk Abdi has also become the new deputy director of the Ethiopian Metal and Engineering Corporation. And finally, Professor Hirut Waldamariam was appointed as the new advisor of the Prime Minister on Social Affairs. It has been 161 days since Ethiopia confirmed its first coronavirus case on March 14, 2020. Even though the country has been commended for acting swiftly to contain the pandemic at the early stage of the outbreak, recent times have proven challenging for the East African nation. Cases surged in August as the pandemic spread in different parts of the country. In the previous week, Gambela, the last region to report the pandemic, surpassed all other regions but Addis Ababa. And Addis Ababa is still leading in the number of confirmed cases. As of the morning of Friday, August 21st, 2020, the total number of confirmed cases is at 35,836 in Ethiopia, the seventh highest in Africa. 620 deaths have been recorded in the East African nation. 13,536 have recovered from the virus and rejoined the community. Ethiopia is the most affected nation in the East and Horn of Africa region. The International Organization for Migration Situation report this week stated that the total number of cases in East Africa and Horn of Africa region had surpassed 79,000. Ethiopia accounts for over 40% of the total cases in the region. At the time the situation report was released, Ethiopia confirmed 32,722 cases, the highest in the East and Horn of Africa region. Kenya follows Ethiopia with 30,635 cases, while Djibouti has the third largest infection rate in the region with 5,374 confirmed cases. Another weekly situation report by the World Health Organization on the status of the virus in Africa also indicates that compared to the past week, Ethiopia recorded a 23% increase in the number of confirmed cases if reported. The number rose from 24,175 to 35,836 between August 12 and August 19. Ethiopia is also one of the 10 countries that account for 88% of the total infections in the African continent. South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Algeria, Kenya, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Madagascar, and Senegal are the other nine countries accounting for most of the cases reported in the African continent. The Ministry of Health is implementing a campaign in the month of August to increase the number of daily coronavirus tests in the country. The campaign was announced in the beginning of August. This campaign is expected to help combat the coronavirus pandemic as well as contributing to policy design activities over issues such as the return of students to schools, campaigns to increase awareness about the pandemic and the thematic areas. With no signs of the public taking more precautions following the recent surge in cases, there is still more to be done to make sure the public implement precautionary measures in order to contain the deadly virus. Before we conclude this segment, let us see the estimate by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation in relation to the pandemic's anticipated toll on Ethiopia by December 1, 2020. According to the Institute, by December 1, Ethiopia will record over 38,000 deaths if current precautionary curators and resources of the country persist at their current state. As the rainy summer skies start to clear and with the Ethiopian New Year right around the corner, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church celebrated the unique outdoor religious and cultural festival, Buhe, on the 30th day of the Ethiopian month, Nahase, or August 19, as the rest of the world may know it. Buhe, also known as the Festival of Debra Tabor, or the Festival of Transfiguration, is one of the oldest annual religious and cultural festivals in Ethiopia. The festival symbolizes the transfiguration of Jesus Christ on Mount Tabor. 
featured in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luther, as well as the second epistle of Peter, the holiday is dedicated by the Orthodox Church to the transfiguration of Jesus following his voyage to Mount Tabor, accompanied by three of his disciples. According to the scripture, while they are atop the mountain, Jesus transfigured himself before them. In the Orthodox religion, this is believed to the be the moment Jesus Christ revealed himself in his full glory. As such, the holiday holds a special place in the hearts of the believers of the Orthodox religion. According to a leaflet prepared by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church Sunday Schools Department, published a while back, the surrounding of Mount Tabor was filled with a bright light. Shepherds who were tending their flocks stayed in the fields longer than normal, thinking that the day had not yet ended. Parents who were worried about their children not returning home in time went out to the fields with loaves of bread, mumu, and torches, chupu, and found their children safe. Based on this event, as the Feast of Transfiguration, or Debre Tabor, or Buhe, approaches, boys in Ethiopia crack a whip made of braided tree fibers and make loud ambiences by whip crackings and announce the festival is nearing. On the eve of the festival, the young boys form groups of varying numbers and go from door to door in their neighborhoods and perform the Buhe Balu song. The reason why boys perform the Hoya Hoya song is to epitomize shepherds who played at the foot of Mount Tabor, marking the day of Jesus' transfiguration. In return, mothers give them the moon moon they baked for the occasion, symbolizing the events of the holiday in question. The next day, on Nazi 13, August 19, villagers gather in the evening to light a bonfire or chupo. The symbolic meaning of lighting a bonfire in the evening of Buhe signifies the light of Jesus Christ's glory that was seen on Mount Tabor. It is also to commemorate parents who lit similar chippos in order to go in search of their children. Likewise, the whip cracking activity that takes place when the holiday nears is connected with the thunder sound that came through the cloud at Mount Tabor. Buhe, apart from its religious significance and symbolism, has special cultural and societal value for Ethiopians. The Hoya Hoya song, which is performed in groups and praises adults and elders, is the most eagerly awaited event by young boys. Many Ethiopian children, not only the followers of the religion, but also followers of other religions, enjoy Buhe and participate in the holiday. In some areas, even non-followers join in the Hoya Hoya song owing to its distinctive rhymes, unique praise verses, and melodies. As Tamkihit Tafarra stated in a research paper entitled Joyful Boys Singing Hoya Hoye, Biblical, Social, Cultural, Connotation, and Symbolism of the Buhe Celebration in Ethiopia, the word Buhe is believed to originate from the term Buha, Hebrew or Buha Amharic, meaning bald head, barren land, or something exposed, a light and something bright. According to her, Hoya Hoye comprises several song parts. Each part consists of distinct melodic, rhythmic, and lyrical messages. The song's entirety is arranged in a cold response style of music, allowing everyone to participate in the event. Thus, one of the boys serves as a lead singer and the rest of the group as an accompanying chorus. These days, the lyrical messages and the true notion of Hoya Hoye song has been influenced by several variables, mainly owing to the change in the economic, social, and cultural setup of the country. From generation to generation, the holiday is losing its authentic color. According to several experts, this year, the coronavirus pandemic is added to the long list of threats contributing to the holiday's importance. Naturally, social distancing policies affect the very core of most Ethiopia's holidays and social life. Buhe is no exception. It is one of the three major holidays where young children are allowed to leave the house to sing at the gates of different houses. The other two holidays are New Year's, where young girls sing the Abba Yehosh song, and young boys circulate postcards to different homes, and Ashenda and Chadai holidays in Tigray and Amhara regions, respectively, where young girls go out in groups singing about the promises of the New Year's and things that come with it. Therefore, it is important that all concerned bodies, including government, religious institutions, and elders should play a role and teach the younger generation to preserve this religious and cultural heritage and transmit it to the next generation accordingly. Like we do every week on the show, it's that time where we talk about international recognition given to Ethiopians and the Ethiopian diaspora. This week, the London-based Africa Leadership magazine featured two Ethiopian ministers in its 2020 African Business Leadership Award list. Minister of Finance Ahmed Shide as the winner of the prize in the category of Finance Minister of the Year, while Minister of Trade and Investment Melaku Al-Level was the first runner-up in the category Trade and Investment Minister of the Year.
The magazine describes the prize accorded to Minister Ahmed Chide as follows. The African Business Leadership Awards is a prestigious recognition event to reward exceptional corporate practices and outstanding achievers in Africa's business landscape and its private sector. The magazine stressed the importance of African business leadership in combating the coronavirus pandemic with the following statement as well. The 2020 edition especially recognizes business leaders, visionaries, and innovators that continue to shape African economies and drive today's leading businesses that are making outstanding contributions to Africa's economic development and post-COVID responses and recovery, using business as a force for good through their CSR and community development activities. Ahmed Shidi won the prize after competing with strong opponents from the African continent. Minister of Finance of Benin, Romuald Wadani, Minister of Finance of Côte d'Ivoire, Adama Kone, and Minister of Finance of Seychelles, Maurice Lostao Lalani, were the other candidates in the category Ahmed Shidi was able to top. Before becoming Minister of Finance in October 2018, Ahmed Shidi served in different government positions on different occasions. For instance, the politician from the Somalia region served as the head of the Government Communications Affairs Office and as State Minister of the Ministry of Finance. Ahmed Shide received his first degree in economics from the Civil Service College in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, as well as completing several postgraduate degrees in different international universities abroad. In addition to his master's in business administration from the Greenwich University, he has also attended the Institute of Social Studies located in The Hague, Netherlands, and the University of Sussex in Brighton, United Kingdom. Congratulations to Ethiopian Minister of Finance, Ahmed Shide, on this great achievement. That's it for this week's episode. Tune in next week for more of Africa Ethiopia.